Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zang here, and today I am bringing you a team analysis on the Trick Room team I used on Road to Rank last week. This is slightly overdue, so I do apologize, but a lot of you guys have been curious about the team, and this is part of my VGC 2015 team analysis series where I cover a team I've used this season and tell you everything about that team. I've already done two on Mega Salamence and Mega Venusaur, which were teams I really liked earlier on this series, so if you've not seen those, definitely check it out. As always, I'm also looking for feedback and comments on this series, so if you have any of those, let me know. And if you enjoyed this series and want to see more team analyses, please let me know by showing your support and leaving a like on the video. As although a lot of you guys have been asking as well, the Mega Law Punny team analysis will be coming up shortly as well. I do apologize for delaying that one. But without further ado, let's jump into this team analysis. So first of all, you know, the team idea. So when I wanted to use this team, the whole idea behind it was I wanted to try out a hard Trick Room team in VGC 2015. You know, in past years of VGC, I've used teams that revolve around Trick Room, but also have a couple of fast Pokemon, but this year, or at least for this team, I just wanted a one that was completely dedicated to Trick Room. I played Cypher, also known as Jun, at a local Premiere Challenge, and I really liked his Trick Room Hail team, so that definitely gave me some inspiration. I didn't really feel the need for more than one Trick Room user on like most teams, or hard Trick Room teams, because I felt like having played with Cresselia since VGC 2012, I had a lot of experience with it, and I knew what I'd have to do to set up Trick Room, uh, and I, you know, knew if I played around taunts and whatnot that I could still manage to set up Trick Room. So I didn't really want two Trick Room users, I just liked one, uh, mainly because I wanted as many like powerful sweepers as I could have had. The general idea behind this team was basically let's set up Trick Room and try to sweep in the 4 or 5 turns um, and afterwards you know hope that at that point your opponents already lost so many Pokemon that even outside of Trick Room you can win. So you know, I really wanted to rely on these really powerful and uh, just bulky sweepers. As a result, I didn't really want to include any fast Pokemon because I wanted as many options under Trick Room as I could have had, as you'll see later on. So when building the team, Cresselia was the first Pokemon I looked at immediately for my Trick Room user. You know, there are a lot of different Pokemon you can use for Trick Room, but Cresselia is still one of my favorite due to how bulky it really is. Uh, I wanted a Fake Out user next to it, and Hariyama's been my Fake Out user since Worlds of 2014, where I paired it up with Gothitelle, and I figured it was still really, really good, especially because of its ability to knock out Kangaskhan in one hit with close combat. So, Cresselia and Hariyama was basically the core I was building with. And then I wanted to add all these powerful sweepers with spread attacks. One reason why spread attacks is so amazing on the trick room is because if you're using single target attacks your opponent can you know predict these and protect around them and trick room only really lasts four turns or you have four turns to take advantage of it so the thing is if you waste the turn your opponent can you know double protect here and there and you really only have a couple of turns to get damage off and the thing with spread attacks is even if one pokemon resists it and the other say maybe protects then the next turn you fall you force out switches and whatnot so it you know spread attacks punish switches there are very few pokemon or teams that can take uh, all kinds of different spread attacks. So I looked at Abomasnow, Sylvia, and Heatran because that gave me a pretty diverse move pool in terms of spread attacks. You know, Abomasnow with Blizzard, Sylvia with Hyper Voice, and Heatran with Fire, Ice, Fairy, and Fire. Fantastic moves, especially in spread form. So after I decided on those five Pokemon, I knew I needed a Mega Evolution, and Camera Up is a pretty solid Mega Evolution for Trick Room teams, um, but you know, I already had Heatran, and those kind of have similar roles. So I decided on Mega Mawile, uh, you know, a Mega Evolution that I've had a lot of experience with since the end of 2014, and one that I really enjoyed, and I felt like it completed the team pretty well. So. As for the individual Pokemon, first one was of course Cresselia with the Citrus Berry. I did go for Citrus Berry over Mentor because I felt like the recovery was really, really important. You know, the Citrus Berry basically comes into effect every game as opposed to Mentor, which helps you maybe one of five games where, you know, your opponent will taunt you. And the thing is, I could easily play around taunt users as well by bringing, for example, Cresselia Heatran against a common taunt users like Gengar and Thunderous or whatever. So, you know, I could just go for a Heat Wave Psychic the first turn to do a lot of damage. And the thing is, when you use Taunt, you leave yourself open to damage. So whenever I was against a Pokemon that might even have carry Taunt, almost always I would just go for an attack assuming that the Taunt would be coming out. And it would help me so much because paired with the strong partner, you know, I'd instantly go up 4-3 to the point where my opponent would realize, wow, that was not good. You know, I already lost a really important Pokemon to the matchup. Pretty generic, bulky EV spread there, 188 special attack to get a lot of damage off. I didn't need special defense really because Cresselia is so specially defensive, and then, you know, relaxed nature with 220 HP and 96 defense. Um, you know, Ice Beam, Psychic, Kelbian, Trick Room, pretty self-explanatory. Did go for Psychic over Psy Shock just to hit Venusaur, Mega Venusaur a bit harder. Um, you know, it's not that popular currently, um, but at the same time, 
I didn't feel like I needed Psy Shock for the Assault Vest user, so I ended up going for Psychic, and it really helped out in general, especially with the possibility of the Special Defense drop, but otherwise pretty generic Cresselia. The next one is Hariyama, and this is the same EV spread that I used at the 2014 World Championships with Guts and Assault Vest. Guts, you know, the ex explanation behind that is you can switch into Thunder Waves and Will-O-Wisps, and that will actually increase your damage power. Also, it means that if your opponent burns or poisons you by accident, you can take advantage of that and get more damage output. Brave Nature with Fake Out, Close Combat, Knock Off, and Stone Edge. Reason why I had Stone Edge over Rock Slide, um, or Ice Punch even, is because I really needed a way to KO Charizard Y, and Assault Vest Hariyama takes Charizard Y's attacks pretty well. I also didn't want to deal with Wide Guard from Pokemon like Edgeslash, so I decided Stone Edge would be my best option. Of course, its accuracy is a bit shaky, but it can still KO the Charizards, which I thought was really, really important. So that's why I opted for Stone Edge as the last move. The next Pokemon is Abomasnow, and this one is basically Cypher's Abomasnow. Uh, for those wondering, I'll actually link his team in the description below, but you'll see that it has Sash with Snow Warning, but Max Attack, Max Special Attack, uh, I obviously Zero Speed Ivy, Quiet Nature, Ice Shard, Wood Hammer, Blizzard, and Protect. So, you know, a lot of the times with Trick Room teams, you want to have as much bulk as possible, but Abomasnow is a relatively frail Pokemon as it is, and it has a Focus Sash, so almost all the times you're getting maybe two or three attacks off with it. So the bulk wasn't really necessary, and it made Ice Shard and Wood Hammer's uh, damage output increase by a significant amount. One question a lot, a lot of people ask is why Wood Hammer over something like Energy Ball or Giga Drain, and that's solely because Wood Hammer just is a lot more powerful than those two attacks, especially against Pokemon that are more specially defensive. So, you know, I didn't really try out Giga Drain, and, you know, if I could use the team in the future, I might go for something like Max HP, Max Special Attack, and 4 Attack with a Giga Drain over Wood Hammer. But there was never any point where I said to myself, wow, I really need more HP EVs, or wow, I really wish I had Giga Drain or uh, Energy Ball over Wood Hammer. And Ice Shard, because of those attack EVs, was able to do a lot more damage than players expected, often picking up surprise KOs, which I really liked when, you know, the Pokemon were weakened enough by Blizzard. So, uh, pretty cool and fun Pokemon to use, though it is very, very situational. Uh, situational. Uh, many games I just did not bring a bomb snow since it is weak uh, to so many types out there. The next one was Spec Sylveon. So you'll see, also pretty generic. I actually just went for max HP and special attack with four special defense. Originally, I had a bulkier spread, but I realized that the bulk wasn't really doing as much as I wanted, so I opted to just change it up in the end. Um, but ultimately, you know, the idea behind this Sylveon is just come in and just dish off Hyper Voices. Obviously, you don't want to take attacks from Steel-type Pokemon like Bisharp or Metagross, but otherwise, Hyper Voice is really, really good. I opted for, you know, 30 defense, special defense IVs because, uh, and one speed IV because I wanted HP ground, and those are the IVs that, you know, Sylveon needed for HP ground. But, you know, that just gave me another answer to Heatran and Steel types because Hyper, otherwise, you know, they would wall, wall them, especially because they resist Hyper Voice. So, it was nice having HP ground and another way to beat Heatran, and then Shadow Ball and Psyshock as the last two attacks. Pretty common on Sylveons. Next one is Life Orb Heatran, also pretty boring EV spread there, but... As I mentioned with the previous Heatran I used, which was Max Special Attack and Max Speed, there were never really any cases where I really, really needed the, you know, like a complicated EV spread. You know, good bulky Heatrans, you know, those are ones that tend to use EV spreads that are all, you know, between the stats because with items like Leftovers or Chopo Berry, you want to, you know, maximize your recovery, your health, and whatnot, and your damage output. But for Trick Room teams, you know, you just want to get as much damage off as possible, and there weren't any attacks I really needed this Heatran to survive that I couldn't have already survived with Max HP. So that is why it's a more simple EV spread. I went with Heat Wave, Earth Power, Substitute, and Protect, though in retrospect, Flash Cannon might have been a better over substitute. But the nice thing about sub is you can set up a sub against teams that try to double protect against you, especially on that last turn of Trick Room, and then it would make them, you know, Heatran's a relatively difficult Pokemon to KO by itself already. So getting a sub up would be really, really good, and that's the nice thing about Trick Room is because, you know, your opponent wants to protect, so you can take advantage of that. And the last Pokemon was Mega Mawile, also with just max HP and max attack. Uh, you know, I used Mega Mawile at the end of the BGC 2014 season, and it was also a very basic EV spread, but I ended up winning Philadelphia Regionals and getting 4th at Texas Regionals with that kind of spread. So if anything, those tournaments just told me there was no need for a more complicated spread if, you know, you really didn't need to survive any specific attacks. So I did go for Brave with Iron Head, play Rough, Sucker Punch, and Protect. Uh, you know, I used to run Rock Slide on Mawile, but with Stone Edge and Hariyama and better ways to deal with Charizard, I wasn't as concerned. So that's basically it for all the Pokemon of this team. As for ways to play with it, Hariyama and Cresselia was by far my favorite lead in terms of setting up Trick Room just because having that fake out option was really helpful, and Hariyama actually checks the metagame relatively well, being able to dish out super effective or neutral attacks to basically almost anything. I also actually often led Cresselia with something that my team or my opponent's team was really weak to. 
For example, if I could tell that my opponent's team was really weak to fire type attacks or fairy types attack, I'd often just neglect to bring Hariyama and just go Cresselia Sylveon or Cresselia Heatran. That way it puts on pressure on the opponent to KO that offensive Pokemon to which I could just, you know, switch out, protect, and trick room, or just go straight for the offense and attack. So I had a bunch of options there, and I liked being able to redirect the attention away from Cresselia, even without a redirection user. Sometimes I actually just wouldn't bring Cresselia at all if I felt like my team um, was really weak to, or it, like my my team didn't have a way to set up Trick Room very successfully. You know, often against faster fake out users plus a taunt user. Like at those points, I just decided, you know what, I'm just gonna play with my sweepers, especially try to get fake outs off with Hariyama and see what I can do. A lot of the times, especially with Trick Room teams, you're going to want to sacrifice a Pokemon too to get a free switch into Pokemon like Sylveon and Mawile, which are relatively bulky, but at the same time, if your opponent predicts their switch-ins can do over 50% instantly. So I was fine often losing Hariyama after the first turn of Trick Room because it meant a free switch into Sylveon and Mawile, and there's nothing scarier than really staring those Pokemon down under Trick Room. And of course, once Trick Room would go up, the goal was to just try to win the game as quickly as possible through all these really powerful attacks, especially those spread attacks, because the main issue is if Trick Room expires and you haven't done enough damage, then chances are your opponent will be able to overwhelm you if you're using this team. And of course, no team is perfect, and this team had its fair amount of weaknesses. Taunt was one of the main ones, though, you know, I personally didn't mind playing against Taunt, I actually really like playing against Taunt because I baited out so often, but, you know, if you are trying out this team, of course you have to be careful of that. Spore from Breloom and Amoongus were very annoying in general as well, just because I didn't have any Lumberries or effective ways to really deal with those two Pokemon. Substitute Steel types such as Metagross and Heatran were also really annoying. You know, you can imagine a Heatran, if I were able to set up Trick Room, would not be very difficult to beat, right? Because I had Earth Power by Heatran, close combat with uh, Hariyama, HP Ground from Sylveon. But if often, you know, should my opponent lead with Heatran to set up a Substitute instantly, then things would become a lot more difficult, especially because, you know, as Cresselia with my Trick Room user, I don't have a great way to hit Heatran, and Heatran can do a lot of damage to any of my Pokemon that can hurt it back. So, both that and Metagross were huge threats. Fire types in general, such as Talonflame and Charizard, were incredibly difficult to deal with as well, which is why I ended up putting Stone Edge on that Hariyama. As I mentioned earlier, Trick Room ending before you can really damage your opponent is really, really bad because then they can take advantage and just overwhelm you, especially if you can't set up another Trick Room. Bulkier teams, I can take the team's powerful attacks, you know, stall between protects and general bulk was also really annoying to deal with. And then finally, losing sweepers be before they can pick up KOs and losing trades was really bad. For example, there are cases where I would say it's okay if I lose my Sylveon because it at least picked up a KO before it fainted, but if you were to lose one Pokemon while your opponent wouldn't lose anything from your attacks, then a lot of the times that would be bad for the team because you're instantly down one of the more important Pokemon that can damage your opponent's team. So that was a pretty big weakness that the team suffered from as well. In conclusion though, it was a really really fun team to use, but like I mentioned, it definitely has its notable weaknesses. Um, you know, a couple of other Trick Room teams I've really enjoyed this year are Cypher, Paul Chua's, and James Speed 1. They all have used some pretty neat Trick Room teams, and uh, you know, I'm excited to see how Trick Room develops further as the metagame goes, because it's always a very viable strategy. You know, I use it the last two years at World, so it's really really strong. And they are really powerful, but a team like this is very one-dimensional and predictable as well, so you should keep that in mind. And I didn't mind that it was one-dimensional and predictable, because I did just want to try it out, and I felt like a lot of players weren't even ready to deal with, you know, just hardcore Trick Room. And, and that was the case for Road to Rank, where I was able to pick up so many wins, just because players weren't ready to deal with all these really powerful spread attacks. But keep in mind that if you're playing against really skilled players, chances are they'll know exactly what to do, because they can see what's coming before you even do it. Definitely try it out though, especially if you're on the lower ladder, I think it's a great way to pick up wins earlier on when opponents aren't as skilled because they just don't have a great way to deal with teams like this team. But yeah, that's it for this team analysis guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it proved informative. The Mega Law Punny team analysis will be coming shortly after, but yeah, go check out Road to Ranked if you have not already and I shall see you tomorrow. Alright, peace.